Hello, my name is Vinny Valdez. Today I'm going to look at how to build a workload based on an application definition and manipulate that across multiple cloud providers using EOLIS. Up to this point, I've installed EOLIS with yum install EOLIS-all. See our use case one video on some of the details behind the configuration. But the only other thing I've done is set up two providers. So at this point, I'll go ahead and log in. And under Administer, select Providers. And I can see the two providers I've set up already, which are Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization and VMware vSphere. Next, I'll go to Administer Provider Accounts. And here's where I'll enter my authentication information for these backend providers. So I'll do that for Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization. Then again for VMware vSphere. Next, I'll go to Administer Realms. In this case, I'm going to make a realm for Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization and another realm for the VMware vSphere provider. And here I'll map the actual data center from Rev as well as the RevM provider to this realm. And next, I'll repeat the same process for VMware vSphere. This will allow me to push my deployables to the different realms by selecting them later. We'll see that. It is also possible to create a single global type realm in which all these providers and different mappings are included. But for now, we're just going to have these individual realms. Next, take a look at hardware profiles. Now, this profile here was automatically generated by EOLIS Configure. You just want to make sure that your providers are matched against this hardware profile. Now take a look at the actual application XML definition. Now this just contains a simple Python script which will gather information about the instance and display it on this web server. Now we're going to switch to a split screen here. On the bottom, I'm going to watch the logs for Image Factory. And up on top, we're going to actually build the different images based on this template. So we'll first start with building it for RevM. Once it builds, we want to push it to the actual provider. So we'll do that with the EOLIS image push command and that specific image ID. And now I'm going to flip over to the actual Rev environment so we can see the actions that take place as it's pushed. I have the REST API up here so we can see some of the debugging output. You can also see this on the RevM console. Now the image will be imported as a template into the export domain and then moved over into the storage domain so that it can be used to instantiate VMs. Now I'll use Elo's image build to rebuild that same application template but this time for the vSphere provider. And again, I'll take that image ID once it's completed and push that to vSphere. And likewise, I'll flip over to the actual vSphere environment so we can watch what happens as this is pushed. Now see there are a couple of images already out there. Then we'll see this one comes in. And now these are ready. So the next thing we have to do is build deployables out of these. So I'll start by creating one for RevM and add that image ID in there. And then I'll do the same thing for vSphere. I'll grab the image ID and add it to the XML template. Now these are on my, one of my web servers. So what I'll do then is go back to the EOLIS interface under Administer Suggested Deployables. And I want to create my two deployables. Now these will point to the URL of where these XML definitions are available. 
So I'll just create one for RevM. I'm going to call that use case two, RevM, and then I'll repeat that process for use case two vSphere. Now I'm going to launch a custom Python application. This is just a simple script that will contact a list conductor and grab a list of deployments and scan for any running ones. In this case, we don't have any. And I'll dump the contents of the script quickly here. This will be available as a link wherever this video is posted. Now I'll head back over to Elis Conductor and launch one of these deployables. I'll start by launching the one into the RevM realm. So I'll click New Deployment, give it a name. Once I've selected the realm and the deployable, I'll click Launch Deployment. And I'm going to revisit the web application and reload it. Now in this case, I'm just reloading it, but we could just refresh it so that it uses the values it had in memory. And now we see that we found the instance, but it's not quite running. So I'll switch over to RevM, and we'll watch as that VM is instantiated through the API. Now that the VM is started, we can refresh the script. And this time it's going to find the state is now running. It has the MAC address. And if we refresh the OLIS conductor, we'll see that it is in a running state. And we do have the matching MAC address. So this link here, this dynamic report, I'll open a new tab. It's basically that application that we saw, which just reports some information about that instance. We can refresh it and see that it is live data. If we grab the IP address, we can SSH to it and dump some information just to make sure that it is a new fresh instance. And here's the script running out of the CGI bin directory. Now I'll launch the next deployable into the vSphere realm. Again, I'll click Launch Deployment, switch over to the vSphere environment, and we can see the virtual machine is cloned and powered up. And similarly, if we refresh the app, we can see that the second instance is now up, and we can find the matching MAC and IP address. And again, for verification, we can look at the live instance running and make sure that all the data is valid, SSH to it again, and, and double check the host name uptime and so forth. Okay, next I'm going to go ahead and show how to stop these instances. So we'll go back to the ELIS conductor web interface and drill down into one of these instances. Select the instance and choose stop. Later we'll see how to stop multiple instances, but for now we'll just do these one at a time. So if we switch back over to the application and refresh, we can see that the instance is now reporting stopped and the MAC address and IP are no longer available. And just to verify, we can switch to the report for the instance, refresh it, and it should time out. And lastly, if we look at the rev environment, we'll see that the virtual machine was indeed powered down. And now we'll repeat the process for the vSphere instance. Select it, choose stop, and verify that everything has stopped. And once again, if we look at the vSphere environment, we can see that the power off command was issued. And lastly, we can try to SSH or, or ping, and we'll see if the IP is down. Next, I'm going to just create a test instance that does not have a matching name with the other deployments. And if we go back and refresh the application, 
at the top here, we see that it found the instance, but it's discarding it since it didn't match our pattern matching that this application had as input at the very beginning. Lastly, I've created 10 instances here. And what I'd like to demonstrate is, first of all, showing all of these instances. We can see that they are running on the two different providers that we have. So as before, we could drill down individually to these instances and manage them, stop them. But uh, in this case, I want to demonstrate stopping all of these in one command. So first, we'll refresh the Python application just to verify that all of these instances are detected. And we see all of our instances down here. Not very pretty, but uh, this works just to get the information. And we could open all these dynamic reports on all the instances and verify, refresh, and see that they're live data, SSH them, etc. But for now, we'll go back to the list conductor and choose all of these instances at once and issue the stop command. Once we do, we can see that all of those actions were queued. And once they're carried out, all of the instances will stop. We can verify that by refreshing the application. And now we can verify that all of the instances are stopped. This concludes the demonstration for this use case. In this video, we covered defining a single application and deploying that workload to different cloud providers, and then managing those all from the EOLIS interface. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please visit eolisproject.org for more information.